Is this where your idea of uh, training with lower belts yes. quite a bit comes yeah. from? Yeah. I've actually just as a side comment, and maybe you can elaborate. I the the place the gym uh, Balance Studios with uh, Phil and Rick McGlory's where I got my black belt, where I grew up as a jujitsu person in Philadelphia. They have a huge number of black belts, but they have a huge number of all other ranks. And the way they picked sparring partners, people you train with, is very ad hoc. It's very loose. It's mm -hmm. very one of those places, one of those gyms where you can just kind of, you can train for like three, four hours. And That's you, great. Could, you could take a break or you could jump yeah, back in. Yeah, very informal. Yeah. And you can go to war with black belts, but then you can also play around with the purple and the blue belts and so on. Excellent. And that was really beneficial for growth. And you, you know, you can pick which, cause everybody has a style and you can pick which style you really want to work on. Right. And then I came to um, uh, Boston Broadway Jiu Jitsu uh, with uh, John Clark, who I love, he's a good friend, but you know, the it's a little bit more formal and i found myself it's a very interesting journey i f i would be training with black belts the whole time and uh it was a very different experience i found myself exploring much less i found myself um learning much less i mean part of that is on my on me but part of it was also realizing that uh wow there's a value to training with people that are much worse than you yes uh, is there is there a philosophy you could speak to on that? Yeah, um, you probably know it already. Um, you know from your studies in artificial intelligence that all human beings are naturally risk averse. This is a, a bias which is deeply seated in in all of us. Um, I'm sure you're you're well read on people like Tversky and et cetera who, who talk about this all the time. Um, for your viewers, uh, there are numerous psychological experiments that have shown that most people to the point of irrationality, fear loss more than they are excited at the prospect of an equivalent gain. So for example, if you have $100 in your wallet, you're more worried about the idea of losing the $100 that you have now than you would be excited by the prospect of gaining $100 that I could potentially offer you. Um, this comes out whenever you get black belt versus black belt confrontations or any kind of similar um, skill level. Whenever you get similar skill levels, the chances of defeat get very, very high. Interestingly, if you're a white belt and you're going against a black belt, you'll take risks. Why? Because there's no shame in losing mm -hmm. to a black belt when you're a white belt. So you'll you'll play more lightheartedly and you'll, you'll have a more fun role. But when you have very similar skill levels, you're gonna come back to what? The techniques that are most likely to get you a win. That number of techniques is usually pretty small. And if you're always battling with the same tough opponents every day, where if you make even a single error, it will cost you that match in sparring and you don't like losing, you're going to stay with a very small set of moves. You might get slightly better at their execution over time, but you as an individual will not grow. Growth, as it does in organic life forms, comes from small beginnings and builds over time. You can't take an untested, untried move and get it on a world champion black belt. It's gonna get crushed, so it's not ready for that. It's like a, a lion cub being thrown out into the Serengeti Plains. A lion cub is just too small and too ineffective. It's a lion, but it's a cub. And it's not until it grows into maturity that it can be a lion that can dominate the Serengeti Plains. Hmm. Um, that's why I always encourage my students to play with a variety of belt types um, and spend the majority of their time with lesser belts for development purposes. When you're getting closer to a competition, you obviously want to change that. You want to be getting more a competitive sense of, of, of hard work, but uh, you must learn to divide up your training cycles into uh, non-competition cycles where you're uh, presumably working with people who are slightly lower in level than yourself, and in some cases, quite a bit lower than yourself. And then um, competition cycles where you're working with people much closer to your own skill level.